Hey everybody, I'm trying to get Steven in here to do the interview, so what's up? I'm going to have to interview, learn how to do this. We're kind of learning on the fly here. I'm going to send him a message. You should, you guys should see what I'm doing. I got my phone in front of my face. If you have questions, oh, there he is. I invited you, Stephen. Billy Jackson. Good morning, sir. Live from Japan. I okay. Dude, I see you. We're we're talking in real time. It's not Voxer. Yeah. How about that? Great. What What's going on? Um, I, and it's evening here, it's uh, 10 p.m., and I'm just kind of chilling, just had dinner and stuff, and just relaxing, and wanted to connect with you, and there you go, we're on, we've been talking about this, actually, how we can get coffee this going. With Conrad. I'm having coffee with Conrad. It is Coffee Time USA. You guys are, what time is it for you right now? About 8 a.m.? It's, uh, it's 8 o'clock in the morning central, where the alligators are in the the sand hill cranes right and uh, yeah <laughs> anyway i'm going to give you guys a background while while other people are joining in i'm going to rebroadcast the audio portion of this on the conrad rocks dot uh, net podcast coffee with conrad but i've known steven for a long time we met on twitter um he had a blog that was just fascinating uh, his blog is holyfirejapan.com and what I found fascinating about your blog, and I, it's like I, I couldn't wait till he said something else, is what it's like being an American in Japan, but an American Christian missionary. And many things are just, like, very interesting. Like, they eat fried chicken on Christmas. I'm like, what? I mean, I never heard of that. I found out that, that Japan is only 1% Christian, and his blog was just extremely engaging. Turns out he's really sold out to Jesus, and I started following him on everything. I followed him on uh, Facebook, Google+. Plus. And then, you know, um, something happened in January where your ministry, God has just goes, that's it. I'm doing something through Steve in Japan. What's happening with that, man? Amen, man. I, yeah, we've known each other for years. That's what's I know. Kind of the cool thing. and. It was interesting. Uh, we um, I want to say hi. There's some people joining. Um, a lot of our Japanese, um, so they might be surprised that this is in English. Penny but... Como's from down here. Hi, Penny. And uh, konnichiwa, konbanwa. <laughs> I'll say that in Japanese, but the, the discussion is going to be in English. Um, but yeah, it's been gosh six years, close to that, that we've known each other, and. Um, yeah, I, I had been in Japan. We lived, there was a big earthquake and the tsunami thing. There was Fukushima, all that, that drama and that stuff we went through. And you you were there. I remember you know, talking with you about that kind of stuff. And now it's just like God's just opened something this January. I mean, it's just, it's been nonstop. It's been nonstop. God is just moving. He's just moving and he's like, keep up with me. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. you got to keep up with guys. Like door opens, door opens. You pray for this person, they get healed. Next thing, people are asking me to come out to places in Japan. I've literally been from the top of Japan to the bottom of Japan, praying for people. I'm telling you, in Hokkaido is the top of the Japan, Japan, and I was just in Okinawa a couple of weeks ago, and I'm praying. I'm seeing God heal people. I'm seeing people um, who are paralyzed being healed. I'm seeing blind eyes open. It's just. <clears throat> God's just, it's just like, I, I can't even really put it into words um, so much as it's just God is just moving. And that's the best way I could say it. And he's inviting me, this Steve that you see here, that Conrad, you, you know me. I mean, you, we've been right. chatting back and forth. I think the Voxer thing was really uh, key, though, because it allowed us to communicate more regularly. Uh, I really recommend Voxer, by the way. To anyone who's watching. We're going to uh, include the link in the show notes. Wherever you're listening to this, we're going to have the Christian chat boxes so you can join and you can uh, hear some really good, comp get into some great nuts and bolts theology about and what God's doing around the world. It's amazing. Anyway, keep going. Yeah, yeah. there isn't, again, there isn't like enough time. I wish I could just like, 
just download everyone what what I'm seeing, you know, it's just so incredible. And it's so cool to be able to chat with you live like this. And ex just express you could just see the look on my face, I can see the look on my face, how excited I am, because God wants us to bring his kingdom wherever we are. And I think this that reality really hit me in January. I was on a, an extended fast that the Lord said, Steve, you're going on a fast. I'm like, you know, I don't know if any of you guys ever fasted. That's the, if you, you, I know some people like fasting and I'm like, because I like good food. Yeah. I like I like I enjoy uh, the food down here. I live in the southern part of Japan in Fukuoka. It's the name of the city I I live in. It's 1.6 million. Um, it's kind of like the capital, the south uh, of Japan. And so, but after that fast, and you know this, Connor, I just got, God just started showing me things that and and really challenging me to to just to step out and be willing to look like a complete fool and mm -hmm. here's the thing here's the thing though is that god will say this stuff he'll say hey go pray for that person and you'll think oh man i'm gonna mess up i'm gonna i'm gonna do it all wrong and i'm gonna be but i was like okay i'm willing to look like a complete fool and then that's mm -hmm. what god and he proves Amen. himself and his glory i want to give a quick shout out to uh to ronnie ballo from houston Diane Rowe from Australia. We really have a world, and there's people in Japan watching on your part of the feed. We really have a worldwide audience right here, right now. It's pretty awesome. Hey, can you, um, I want to talk about how God moves through you, but can you, let's start this out with some, some of the testimonies um, um, so that people know. What, what, what's he doing? I mean, while I'm saying, hey, you know, God's doing stuff in Japan, but what has he done that, that you would like to share testimony-wise? Ooh, <laughs> there's a lot, and I, I think I'll just go to um, some of the ones that have been recent. Um, we had a man, uh, actually just, just a couple weeks ago in Okinawa, a man is paralyzed on his right side. Uh, he came up for prayer. He can't, but he can't move his arm. He can't open his hand. Is clenched. You know, you probably see these people, uh, you know, around, you know, they have a clenched hand from a stroke, uh, right. and he could open his hand he couldn't move his arm or anything like that okay and uh, he had obviously he had uh, speech problems and things like this uh so he came up for prayer uh at one of the, the healing sessions we were doing i'm doing healing sessions but i we're doing more than that we're going on the street and stuff too but this is a radical testimony this man um it was demonic in its source and when we as soon as uh, we, we were praying over him to to cast out the demonic force that was actually holding him there. Uh, this is really interesting. I mean, I don't know all the details of how everything works with healing and deliverance, but all I know is that we have authority in the name of Jesus, and we told it to leave, and uh, he was delivered. And the next thing, I grabbed his hand, and I, I say, open up. I just told his hand, open his hand, went, boom, just opened up like that. And everyone <laughs> was watching. There was just like, whoa, you know, thing. And I said, and I, and I looked at the audience. You know, I would say audience. It kind of sounds like a show. I do not like it being there like that. But it was. There was people watching. And I said, look what God is doing in this man. Look, guys. He is real and he is doing this. And this man is now beginning to control his hand for the first time in years. Um, an ex-Yakuza man. He was in, he was in Yakuza, uh, Japanese mafia, crime, you know, now. Oh. I didn't so, know what that was. Yeah, because you know, basically mafia. So think about all the sins and all the demonics that, that had been piled on top of him. Now was being released, and now even his, and then freedom in his hand, and and it's just a miracle. I mean, people just go, "What are we looking at here?" I mean, people just again, you saw, I saw their faces of when the jaws drop and everything. And I said, "Look what God is doing." Not Steve. Not this. Is, this is God. But it was my voice. It was me saying it. You know, it was me commanding it. Um, because we got authority in Jesus, and we just need to exercise that authority. And uh, that was a powerful miracle. That I mean, think about years, people taking medicine or people surgeries, all these things that we try to do. Right. Just that moment, God just did it. And uh, that was a powerful testimony. We had one woman who had a S-shaped spine. I'm not, I'm not joking. She was S-shaped. It was like curvy, curvy, okay? And um, she actually – and there was a chiropractor. This happened to be a chiropractor – at the, the service that night, um, he's licensed and everything. He's just there. He's a Christian guy, and um, and he could test. And he actually testified to this. He's like, she her spine is a completely messed up. She had said she'd been to many hospitals. She's been turned away from surgery from hospitals for years 
think about this living with this she can't she got this pain she's got this immobil immobility problems and she's been turned away she can't just like nothing we can do for you sorry ma'am there's nothing we can do and uh she came up and I just said, hey, I'm, all I'm going to do, I just told her, just like, I, I feel like a little bit kind of like a doctor. I just got to explain what, you know, I'm going to do. I'm just going to put my hand on your back and I'm going to tell the spine to go straight and the Holy Spirit's going to move it. And that's exactly how I said it. And I said, here we go. And it was literally just a, a few minutes to be praying and commanding that spine to go straight. And all of a sudden I put my hand, take my hand off. And once I felt it move, I felt, I felt it move. I felt it start to move. There's some kind of little movements in, in the, along the spine. I know, like, you know, your muscles and stuff started moving. I could feel some moving in there. So I pulled my hand out. I'm like, oh, Holy Spirit's got it now. And literally, like an uh, abacus, you know what an abacus is? How, like, uh, it, you know, you move <laughs> the spinal column. I mean, the, the spine was moving like, whoop, whoop, and everything went straight Amen. up. And she was just like, she could not, she just was like, just something touching me. And I'm like, my hand is off. I am not doing anything. And everyone was just in awe. And the, her, her spine went completely straight. The chiropractor came and checked his, oh, my, it's straight. It's straight. And I was just like, oh, you know, talk about, you know, your hair stands on it. You're like, the Holy Spirit just moved this S to a straight line. And she's completely free. I said, move around. I go, check it out. She's like, it's different. I feel like a different person. This is amazing. Everything's normal. And I, I just, <laughs> I just go, God, thank you. That's amazing. And this woman now, she is, she's gone out and she's telling people about this. I mean, think about it. Amen. The she's been Praise to. the Lord. And you just if you think about the impact, guys. The impact when you were willing to, and then that looks looks foolish. Are you, are you think about this, guys? In the flesh, are you going to stare and look at someone's spine and go, spine goes straight? I mean, that is it looks like foolishness to to do that. People would laugh at you. This, but I'm like, hey, that's what happened. That is exactly what happened, and God moved it. It's amazing. Yeah, and this this started happening. God told you to fast, and then I guess in the nuts and bolts of it, you started – that increased your relationship with the Lord or or something because something happened in January, man. I mean, I've been following you for years, and then that's amazing. I, I just want to cry because God is healing people today, man. You know, one of my testimonies that I share with some of my friends, and I don't even know – um, is the one with the two people a catatonic in the wheelchair? Remember you were talking about the, yeah, and you said the Holy oh, Spirit said yeah, go pray yeah, for him. Yeah. That, that was yeah, that man. <laughs> that one just moves me, man. Can you share uh, that one? Oh yeah, I, there's so many, man. There's so many. I'm just, I we gotta we gotta um, get this down, man. I, I do share it a lot, um, but there is uh, this is back back in April. And there is a couple and the daughter had brought them. They both have dementia. I mean, severe dementia. I mean, like I'm snapping my fingers. I'm like waving. There is no change in that man's facial expression. The father, especially the, the mom had a little, she gave me a little like high, a little nod. that was like a high, but it was, I mean, there still wasn't really much going on. Um, I would speak and they're just like, I, and I asked the daughter, what's, what do I do? And she's just like, well, they have dementia. Could you pray for them? You know, because she's uh, her, she came with faith for for the healing of her parents. You know, and she just saw someone's shoulder be reconnected. I mean, so she's so she's like, "Come on, come on!" I I, I think it was like the last people of the night. You know, I mean, I'm busy. I'm walking around. I'm praying for people. God's just br breaking forth the shofar in heaven. I'm telling. We heard the shofar in the middle of worship, like a sound of a trumpet, and it was just amazing in Japan. Just like moving, and then. And then at that, that was the first night I did any kind of healing ministry, like the first night of doing any kind of like healing ministry. And she's the last person to come up. She says, can you please pray for my parents? And I'm like, I don't, I'm like, and I'm a new, I feel like I'm a newbie. I'm like, I don't know what the, okay, can they hear me? And she's just like, well, they have dementia and they're just, they, they're my parents. I love them. And I just saw all these amazing things, but can you just pray for them? And she was obviously very, she was teary eyed. And I said, okay. And I just looked at the first I prayed for the, the woman uh, there again, they're probably in their late seventies. And um, I looked her in the eye and I just said, Jesus loves you and God loves you. And right now I break off every curse that's on your life. Every curse, uh, every ancestral curse. Again, there's a lot of stuff, especially in Okinawa tied with ancestor worship. They, they worship ancestors over there. And I just started breaking stuff off and just let the Holy spirit from that point on. And then uh, I just saw her start to tear up. I'm, her facial expression did not change at all when I was praying for her. And then she also just saw her eyes tear up. There's just dark tears just flowing out of her eyes. 
flowing out of our eyes. And I just say, come out, come out, all dementia, get out right now. I just command you all out. And then she looks at me like she'd never seen me. Like it was just, I just saw the look in her eyes. She just like, she looked and she's like, oh, and she just smiled at me. And she kind of said like, konnichiwa, which is the grading in Japanese. And she said, oh, I kind of don't want konnichiwa. It's like she saw me for the first time. And that was after about a minute. And then I just said, more, Lord, more, Lord, more. And, and, and then, then all of a sudden, you know, her nose starts to run. And it's just stuff coming out. And just, I can't explain it. But minutes later, I'm talking to the woman. I'm talking to her. And she's talking back to me. And then I, I go, and I just praise God. And I hold her. And I just, and her daughter's obviously weeping. Just, you guys just moved. It's amazing. So the next thing, uh, her husband, she's like, she points to her husband, like, pray, you know, like, kind of like, husband, husband. You know, I'm like, okay, he's next, man. And he is, he is, I mean, it is like, I could snap, I could tap him, nothing. He's just, just staring. And, um, and the same thing, just same thing, start praying. And then, wow, I mean, he just, all of a sudden, like, just drool comes out of his mouth. I, it sounds kind of gross, guys, but hey. Is that just, deliverance? Like, God, yeah. It's just drool starts flowing out of his mouth. His nose just starts running like crazy, like just dripping on the floor. And I just, that's right. I'm just commanding all of that dementia out. And all of a sudden, again, the lights come on and it's like the cloud is removed. He was in a, I, I, the best way I can describe it was like, it's almost like he was probably in a haze and a cloudiness. And that's what that disease is. And they just can't see anything. They can't, they're all just, everything's inside. And all of a sudden it's like the cloudiness is gone. And now you can see things outside of yourself. And then I started to talk with him um, very slowly. I just said, can you hear me? And he's like, yeah. And then the next thing you know, we're talking, we're, we're um, engaging one another. And I actually took, and then, and he had a cane too. And I just, again, I prayed for his, his whole body, you know, and then he didn't even need the cane after that. You know, he had a cane, they came into the cane. I ended up taking a vote, a video of them, uh, the couple walking out uh, and they're just waving at me. You know, they're still, I mean, they're still old, elderly couple. I mean, they're still, you know, there's, Elderly, you know, they're not, you know, running out the door or sprinting or anything. Um, but they're completely. But how long were they like that, brother? How long were they not be able to, the community, the, the family was not able to communicate with one another for how long? You know, I don't know uh, the details about how long, but she said that Zuto, which in Japanese is like for, like for a long forever, kind of like it's always been like this. And that's why I, I didn't get any details on the of that. They got but, their uh, family back, brother. I mean, that's. Yeah. that's Mm. And, and the, the daughter, I, I've actually met the, the daughter again uh, this last time I we went to Okinawa. Again, this is so cool to keep connecting with these people. They're real people. They're not just something you read in a magazine, you know. These are real people. And that's the thing I want to get to people understand is, like, the way I want to do ministry, the way I, these are real people. And you can go back. You can visit them. You can talk with them. Um, they're more than just a story, although it's a very powerful story. This woman had this daughter because of her faith. It was her faith that healed the parents, and I'm just operating in how, what I'm doing. I mean, I believe God will do it, and he does, and, and they, they're restored, and they're talking to each other, and the, the, they're all, you know, I guess they're, they're coming to that church now um, in, in Okinawa, and they're just, they're, it's like they're reborn, you know. We talk about born again. We talk about the process of salvation Guys, salvation is not just a head thing. It is everything. God's like, I want to make all things new. And that family was made new that night, you know. And that's just beautiful. Beautiful Amen. stuff. So for the people watching, you know, be sure and follow Stephen on Facebook. That's where he posts a lot of the videos. Um, I mean, he has a heart for the lost. When he goes out. I know there's stuff he doesn't talk about, but he goes out and ministers to the homeless, and he's got hmm. a lot on video. I've seen some homeless people. Um, God moved with them through some of your videos. I'm very glad that you share that. It inspires us, man. So, But that, that testimony about the people in the wheelchair, I don't know why I'm in, but it just completely moves me because you got your mom and dad back, and the husband and wife can talk to each other again. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I hate the devil. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, that's another story. The the <clears throat> man, uh, this man was in Osaka. Um, the six that was I know the time. Sixteen years, you know, sixteen years. Oh yeah, yeah. This is the different. Tell us uh, that one. Tell us that one. Sixteen <clears throat> years, man had a stroke. Sixteen years ago, uh, left him paralyzed. Um, he can't speak. He, he he couldn't speak. He couldn't walk. He had twenty four seven care from his wife. Um, and his wife obviously had her own health problems too. And we uh, went over 
because of all the things that are happening, they said, hey, can you come over and just pray, um, you know, pray for the dad, you know. Um, and we, we you know, went over there, we prayed for him, and we, we spoke life, we breathed life actually into him. That The Lord just said, start breathing on him, and literally we were just breathing on him. And all of a sudden, life started coming back into his body. I just was like, what was dead comes to life. I mean, the brain, all of a sudden, he's He's, he's clicking in. You can see the brain starting to work again. Um, again, his, the stroke left him unable to, to talk. He could only grunt. He could only go, uh, uh, and grunt. But um, we, we started speaking to his body. His body started to kind of move again, and uh, he started to stand up and walk. He realized, too, he could just sit, tell he can, he can move. He starts to realize, I can move. Still wasn't able to talk. So the last thing, we put our hands right on it, like around here, and we just said, mouth open up all the nerves and everything just connect in Jesus name, allow this man to speak that his tongue would work and everything would work perfectly. And all of a sudden he starts to say words like kind of like ABCs. He starts saying A, B, C, D, you know, in Japanese. And then he looks at his wife and this just oh, it broke me, man. He looked at his wife and the first word out of his mouth in 16 years with his wife's name. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. He's got nothing else. He's just, he probably, you think about this. He knew, he's like, you, you love me. You cared for me. And he's like, oh, he just looked at his wife and he just said her name. And it just, it ruined me because that's our God. You know, he's so, he loves Amen. these beautiful stories. If we would just say in the name of Jesus, walk in the name of Jesus, talk. And we would just take that authority. What beautiful things he would show us. And this man is, he's walking and he's talking to his wife. It's Amen. amazing. It's amazing, and uh, I just love stories like this. It gets me all emotional again. <laughs> you know, yeah. and that's what they're for. Testimonies are there to just re-excite uh, us and energize us. But guys, this is this is it. You know, this is not. It's not church and worship and all that stuff. I know there's a lot of supernatural stuff going on, but hey, guys, this is what it's for. That's the kingdom, guys. That's the kingdom. Amen. Guys. You know, one of the things that you said earlier in this broadcast is being willing willing to look stupid for Jesus. And so, obviously, you're stepping out. What What are some of the things that you're learning? Um, the, I'm learning that there, God <clears throat> will give you a way to approach people, and that way to you approach people is in love. Um, Amen. And- that is something I'm learning, and I, I, I'm still learning stuff. And you talk about doing some street stuff. Um, even the, the people I prayed for, again, it was there's a loving approach to you know the healing nights, or you know it's kind of that's kind of understood. But when you're kind of going out on the streets, you know people don't know what you're going to talk about when you just kind of approach them. But if you approach them in love, and you just approach them, you look at something common that you have, or you just talk about the weather, and you approach it with love and a smile. God will just give you an opportunity just to say, yeah. hey, you know, I even I'll tell people, I'll go, hey, you got, you know, I, I pray for people. I'll just sometimes be really frank, but I pray for people. I see you have a, you know, something on your hand there and you, you have some pain in your wrist or sometimes I even say, hey, do you have any pain in your body? You know, and they're like, oh, I'm completely fine. Like this, you know, I'll just share a quick story. So we're in the park late at night. There's this guy watching me pray for a person and there's, he's watching and he's going, wow, you, why are you guys all clapping? I go, well, she couldn't touch her toes. Now she can touch, touch her toes. God just did a miracle. And the guy's like, for real? He's like, okay. And I go, hey, and I'm, by the way, do you got any pain in your body? He's like, oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, I'm, 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 I'm he's a Marine. You know, he's, I'm, t- I'm okay. I'm good. You know, and uh, I end up just talking with him. And next thing I know, I find out he's got some pain. I mean, he's got some back problems. Right. He just didn't want, <clears throat> you know, he didn't want to talk about it. But the more we just loved him, the more it just kind of bubbled up. And he's like, oh, sure. Why not? You know, pray for me. That's cool. And I put my hand on his back and he said, whoa, he just started feeling that touch from the Holy Spirit. And um, all the trauma came out. He said he felt really good. But it was an approach of love, you know, and joy that what we do when we serve Jesus is very, we're filled with joy. We're overflowing. And that's, that's where you want to minister from that place. You know, not that I feel bubbly all the time. I mean, sometimes I just, I don't get that feeling until I engage someone. Um, that's why I talk about looking silly or kind of crucifying the flesh. Like, I, I, I sometimes I, I guess that's one example. I, it was of an overflow. We were praying for another person and it led to another person. Um, there are times when I've like just, it's just, hey, I'm sitting there. They're sitting there. I mean, I prayed for a guy naked. <laughs> yeah, I remember this. Yeah. <clears throat> that's one of the yeah, benefits like, of being on Vox where you get to hear really quick what happened. That was pretty cool. 
<laughs> and I prayed for a guy naked. And, and it was all about approaching the guy and not making him feel threatened. Where uh, you guys, hot springs in Japan, everyone's naked in the hot springs. This guy had a broken hand. He had a big baggie on his hand. And all I said was like, whoa, what happened to your hand? Because it's kind of a weird thing to have on your hand, a big bag, you know? And, I, and that's how I approached it. And I said, what you got in your hand? I was like, big bag. And he's like, oh, yeah, I broke it. And they go, oh, for real? And they're like, hey, can I? I, I pray for people. Can I just pray for it real quick? And I, I just, I took his hand and I said in the name of Jesus, all broken, all pain leave and all broken bones mend right now in the hand. And I took it and I, I, I actually breathed on it. I put my hand close and I just breathed on it. He took the bag off and I breathed on it and I said, move it around. And he, he said, whoa, it moved. And he's like, uh, he kind of was like, and he's like, I go, there are any pains? Oh, there's a, and I'll be honest, guys, hey, sometimes it's a one time shot. Sometimes you got to keep going. And then um, uh, he said, well, there's a little pain. But he's like, I can move it, and I'm good. And I'm like, no, 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 let's get all that pain out, brother. Let's get it all out. And he's like, okay, sure. You just did it once. Let's do it again. And I just did it. I say thing. I just said, nah, all that pain I'm telling you to leave. And I tell it to leave. And then all of a sudden, he's like, full movement, zero pain. And the guy is, is next to him is like, are you for real? And he's like, yeah. He's like, no way. And then you just see the face. Um, yeah, he ends up picking up his bag with a broken hand and walking out of the the hot springs, man. And then I meet the whole family. We're talking about, uh, I was sharing something, you know, where I don't say he's like, this is the name of Jesus. Uh, again, this is way to, you know, you show God. And then it just, obviously it makes sense to talk about Jesus because Jesus just healed them. You know, we're not, I'm not going to, especially Japan, people don't know Jesus. They just think it's a foreign religion, but you think he's all ears. He's like, he told his family, he's like, we should be, we should go to church. <laughs> he's like, this is, you know, I mean, they're, they're completely sold on this idea of, getting to know more about Jesus because he had a broken hand and now it's completely well. Amen. And so it's not complicated. It's just, you have to be willing. And again, that's, you know, think about this. I use this miracle as an example for being uncomfortable. And that was the first time guys I've ever prayed for someone in public. All the other times were prayers in church and it's, you know, it's a private setting. The first pray prayer I've ever done in public for a person for healing was when I was standing in front of them naked. That's crazy, dude. <laughs> and that's the thing. I had, to, I had to accept this. I had to accept it. God says, do you want to pray for him? I'm like, I kind of do. You know, I want to see him healed, God. And he's like, are you willing? Are you going to go? And I'm like, kind of, you know, in your head, how you do this thing with God. And he's like, you've been wanting this for years, Steve. It's kind of like, he's like, come on, you've been wanting this for this years. Just see, just see what happens. Who, you know what? It's, and then I just like, you're right. You're right, God. You're right. You're right. You're always mm. right. <laughs> and you just go. Amen. And you stand up and there's nothing to hide. Literally. That was what was deep about the whole, the whole process is actually prophetic. It's like, there's nothing to hide. You know, when you pray for someone, when you want, when you are going, when I say prophetic, it's like the future, when you pray for people, you're just going to take your clothes off your spirit. There's, there's nothing, there's no barriers between you and them. And that's how you pray for people. You know, Amen. you know, I have no agenda guys. I have no agenda for them to come to my church. I have no agenda for them uh, to become my friend or my donor or my supporter or anything. That's why I really think, you know, you start, guys, you start praying for people, start praying for homeless people because then there's no agenda for them to repay you or anything. In fact, Jesus said that. He says, when you go out, this is, there's a verse in Crown you'll probably, when you go out, invite the, the, when you have a banquet, invite the poorest people because they won't repay you. There's no, there won't be any ulterior motive for you doing this. When you pray for people, pray for the homeless, pray for the people who are, who can never repay you for what you're doing. And I, I really feel that that is a powerful word for people who want to get into this ministry is like, just pray for the least of these, the poorest, the people you find on the street. There's no way you pray for some rich kid, uh, rich man's kid. They'll want to give you money. And, you know, there are people that are trying to amount lots of wealth using their, um, their anointing. Um, but this is what Jesus said. Those are the words of Jesus. And I just go back to that. And it's, it's supernatural. I love sharing this stuff because it really, it really, to me, is, is changed my life. My life has changed, man. It's changed Amen. in half a year. And I, I just, I feel in a way, I was like, man, God, I was, I had to repent. You know, that's what that fast is all about. It's probably, it's for me, you know what I mean? It's like, I got to repent. Of what I'm thinking about God, what I really do, I really want his kingdom first. And then when I Amen. had that, fast, that was a time of repentance and a time to realign my thinking. And some people will watch this and they'll go, you know, Steve, that's awesome what God's doing through you and, and this and that. And I get that a lot. And I go, you know what? I had to repent, guys. I just had to repent. 
how, how are you doing this? Well, I repented. I had to change my thinking. I had to say, okay, right. There is God is real. God does heal. And how am I going to do this? I'm going to change my thinking about how I see the kingdom of God. And I'm going to say, I can bring the kingdom of God. And that, that, that thought, that way of thinking has transformed my life. It's transformed my ministry. And I say my ministry, but I mean, it's God's ministry. You know, I'm starting to right. drop my, uh, my, 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 um, my possessive, uh, you know, pronouns, you know, like just. It's stop. Jesus' it's church. Yeah, it's not just the Steve's and the my. But, you know, it, the ministry we do is is really his ministry. He's invited us into the Trinity. And that might take people to go, what do you mean? I mean, he, Jesus he he want he wants us to have abundant life, right? He wants us to to to, uh, to do the things that I do. He says in John fourteen, he says that says that it, all the things that up until now that I've been doing, anyone who believes, not just pastors and people and this and that and anointed preachers and all, we go through this thing where anointed we create these ranks, and it's there. There's there's obviously people who have you know they're walking longer than others, and there's there's authority there's authority structures, there's mentors and, and pupils, all that stuff in the word. But when Jesus is talking about who can do his works, he says, anyone who believes. That's in John 14. And then he talks about going to the Father. Um, there'll be so but he's also, you know, saying these things you will also do because I go to the Father, because we are all going to be connected, because this is all how it works. You you are now my representatives. You are, you know, you are my body. This is the things that the, the scripture talks about over and over again. And I had to repent and really start to see my life that way. And, Amen. Uh, and that's what's that's really what's transformed. Um, what you see now is it's just transformed. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. The, it's amazing. And what you're doing, you're thinking kind of like you, you're thinking God thoughts. You've exchanged your thoughts for God thoughts and the way Jesus speaks. It, it's an amazing thing. I was going to, um, I wanted to ask you about what ministry you're doing in Japan. I mean, I know it's different. We're in the Bible belt here. So what are what are you doing over there? If we're to put it in a category or describe it? Uh, well, right now, as far as missional stuff, like I have a missions organization that I'm with. Um, that I'm over doing church planning training and kind of, uh, Japan, we, you've probably shared it's like 1% Christian. That's what the stats say. Although the number is rising, uh, there was a, uh, uh, what does it say? Uh, a census that came out with 6%. So we've seen 5% increase, uh, since the last time that census was saying 1%. So it's up to six. I believe there's going to be even more, but again, church planting being, uh, a key to spreading the gospel, right? Because if there's a presence of believers in a new area, so that's what I help train people to step out and to, to you know basically hear God's voice and to start uh, that church and that that movement. And when I say church, it's again, it's not the concept of a building; it's the concept of a of a people movement, of people coming together, believers, no. seeking, or like Acts thirteen church. You know, actually no. talk about like the training I do called dynamic church planning training. Um, we 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 go through Acts meticulously we go through acts 13 and say that's how church starts is acts 13 god gives the vision to these uh to the group of people and they sit and then there's a mission that happens from that and that's how how uh, new churches are meant to be uh to be born we call them being birthed right these movements of god and um so that's what i do in japan um dcpi japan is is the name of the movement that uh, we've started again? It's through DCPI, Dynamic Church Planning International, is the missions org that um, I take donations through, uh, through especially from uh, the U.S. Uh, that's that's where it operates from, but it's worldwide, um, and that's that's something that's going on. But then I have my own, you know, and what I'm doing what started this year, praying for people going to other parts of Japan. So those it's those two combined are basically. Uh, the main focus of uh, what I'm doing as far as ministry. Amen. Uh, so just so you guys know, Steve goes to the homeless, which, you know, basically the homeless are overlooked. I mean, in by the mainstream. And also you've went, you've actually taken stuff to the earthquake victims uh, and, yeah. and uh, tsunami victims or, you know, victims of floods and so forth. So yeah. that's one of the things you do. Yeah. And just being in the place, again, I just see myself, I want to be like Jesus and, uh, and help people. I've had lots of opportunities. There was a big earthquake last year to go out and to assist and also to get people to come out, you know, uh, assist in that whole process of getting people to 
uh, the ground and working and, and helping and loving people. And again, God, just all you have to do is be available and God will do stuff. I mean, I'll, there's an amazing story of a woman throwing away her household idols, you know, after this earthquake. I mean, it happened last year. You know, these idols didn't do any, any good. And we're like sharing about Jesus. And like, she's threw them away right there. Amen. It's like, throw away your idols. Follow Jesus. And uh, we had an opportunity because we were helping her clean her house. And her house was split in two, you know. Um, You just have to be willing to go. Uh, Another story, man, in Japan, there's these big, like, altars, you know, in people's houses, these Buddhist altars. They're kind of like household little altars where people would pray for ceremonial, traditional times of the year for blessing and stuff. This one guy I prayed for, he had one night, he came to, he came to me, he had a fever, his throat was swollen, he was just told, I mean, they were going to take him to the hospital, but he came out um, to this healing night I was doing, and I prayed for him, and I just told the fever to leave, I told everything to leave, and literally minutes later, the fever went down, his, his throat was swollen, it just re- went back to normal. Next day, guys, he throws away the altar, <laughs> and, and he takes it to the, he takes it to the dump, he's like, I, I, this is, He's like, I've tasted the real thing, you know, this Japanese guy. And um, he's and he was a devout, I guess he was a member of one of the churches, these kind of uh, the Japanese religion churches, the you know, Buddhist religion. He was a, a kind of a prominent member. And he, he had this big one. He, they said he's like huge altar, this huge altar. He tries to take the dump. They say, we can't throw that away. First of all, they're probably scared. You know, all the kind of maybe, you know, they think represents a throw it away altar of the gods or something. So they're like, no, we can't take it. It's this big thing. So then he ends up taking it to the church. They chop it up and they burn it in the fire. And, and he just That's got biblical. baptized. He just got baptized. I got I got a, a, a photo of him getting baptized, or he was in his baptized clothes for the pastor uh, about uh, two weeks ago. Because like, you know, what so you're doing is you're baptized. activating a king. I, I call it activating kingdom seekers. You know, you it know. basically. See, Jesus says, "Be ye first, seek ye first the kingdom." And basically, like the the woman at the well. I mean, Jesus just had a word for her, and then all of a sudden, she's on fire. And that's that's what you're doing. You're just touching them with the presence of God, and then they're that's it. I'm seeking Jesus. Yeah, you and activate it. it. I, yeah. And I, I don't know. Like that's the thing. Um, I try and give advice, and I say, well, one of the biggest advice is actually getting rid of yourself. Like, just get yourself out of there. Get yourself out of the equation. Stop thinking. Stop trying to control the situation. I'm serious. I'm silly. As soon as you start to control the situation, it, it gets funky. It gets hard. Um, I'm learning to let go more and more and let the Holy Spirit k- take control when I'm praying for people. Um, I, I prayed for this guy. Uh, <laughs> I prayed for this guy. He's, like, bigger than me, you know, and he's he, he's on drugs. <laughs> and he's a Hawaiian guy. I imagine, imagine a Hawaiian guy. <laughs> I'm not a big guy, to be honest. You can't tell. I mean. By looking at this video, but I'm not a very tall, big guy. And, and the, the first guy to come out for prayer was this big Hawaiian guy. <laughs> and, I, and he's all on drugs. I could see the eyes. I, and I just told the demon to leave, and he left. And we held each other, and we wept. And I spoke over him love. And I spoke over him and everything that God wants to do in his life. And um, so I'm learning. But, but my, my flesh reaction, oh, my goodness, God. I'm, <laughs> you know what I mean? But as a big guy, you could go, you know, what happens if he does this and that? You start to think. You start, and then it's like, but here I am, Lord. That's are you gonna? It's it's all I'm learning to say. And Jesus said, "Be simple, be simple." You know, I'll teach you everything you need to know as you go, and that's what you learn is to learn as to learn. you go, as you go, as you go, as you go, as you go, and that's 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 what we have to operate like that. And then you got to pick up stuff. You're gonna pick up little things that you figure out, like you know. Um, you can't just grab someone and heal them without their permission, you know. <laughs> I mean, there's these yeah. things that like, you can't just grab them. You're healed. And they, they, there's there's a little bit that they have to give you a, a space. I say a space. You have to create space uh, for faith. You have to create space for love uh, with that person. So you can't just grab people and start, you, you know, shaking them to be healed. You know, I think there's a there's a process that that goes on um, when you're doing again the evangelism type stuff one-on-one i think everything's the situation the holy spirit's gonna create for you but when you're talking about engaging people and uh, again i do a lot of the one-on-one stuff it's with the person it's intimate is that you're creating a space uh to let the holy spirit show you what to do also for faith and also just to love them and when you create that space and you make that availability you'll you'll be saying stuff and doing stuff it's just like i got nothing else I, i've come this far you know <laughs> I, I'm, I've come Amen. this far, God. So, I mean, I guess I'll kiss the man on his head. And I kissed the guy on his forehead because he had dementia. And God touched him. 
And like, this is kind of like, what? You kissed the guy? I'm like, yeah, I just, the Lord says, touch, kiss his forehead. And all of a sudden pray for him. And there was something that was released in his life. There was healing. Uh, he felt, I could just, you know, obviously he, his, this man's countenance changed after I did that. But that's just like, you would not tell someone, all right, go kiss people, you know, <laughs> and they'll get healed. I mean, the Lord had to lead you to that place to show you what to do. And now there's something about holding him and just kissing on the head, telling him that his heavenly father loves him and he's going to set him free. And then all of a sudden there was, the Lord did something. So that was another person I prayed for. And I, I keep sharing testimonies that come to my mind. Um, right. I wanted to, I wanted to move to the, to a prophetic part for a second. Um, Jesus did unusual miracles. Like he would put spit mud and put it in the blind guy's eye. And yeah. some of the stuff that, Steve follows the Holy Spirit. He's obedient to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit asked him to do, you know, say some pretty interesting things. And yep. I'm thinking, and here, here's, here's what I'm thinking. We have this model. It's like when, when, uh, when something spiritual happens, we want to grasp that with like a freeze frame, like uh, Peter wanted to make a tabernacle for Elijah, Elisha, and Jesus. We want to capture that moment, and yeah. then we make a tradition out of it. But the Holy Spirit is fluid. The Holy Spirit is now. He's moving now. He's like the wind in the trees. And mm. those who follow the Spirit of God, those are the sons of God. And that's what you're doing. He's giving you interesting things to do, and they're working, right? I mean, it's, it's amazing. Like yeah. rub salt on somebody's shoulder? I mean, what? Yeah, it, it, that, that's the stuff. Like you, what you're saying is so <clears throat> true, Han. It's fluid. It's the wind. Just like you said, the words of Jesus, it's like the wind. I mean, you can't grab it. You can feel it. You know it's going. You know the direction of the wind. That's a great word, man. You know the direction of the wind, right? It's going that way. Okay, I'm going that way. I don't know what's going to happen after that, but the wind's blowing me this way. So those who are led by the Spirit are like, it's like the wind, you know, that's great. And like water. And then he lights somebody up. And, and, and it, when he lights somebody up, you have that moment of decision. Am I go being willing to look stupid for that person, for Jesus, for that person? And then if you're not obedient, you'll never see a harvest. And you're seeing harvests, brother. You're, I mean, you know, you're having that woman at the well type moment where people are getting on fire for Jesus. I mean, I'm just saying that's what I'm watching. It's an amazing thing to see. Yeah, and you never you, you shared briefly about the the salt and the oil, man. <laughs> it sounds like you're yeah. cooking. Salt. <clears throat> but cooking. I prayed for this man three days. This man, um, he's in his nineties. Um, he's, I guess, the, the way the story works is that he, he saw something in his house. I think it's demonic, and uh, the, the next day he was on his back. He couldn't move, and he was almost almost paralyzed. But he was, I guess he was able to kind of talk. But he was three days straight like that, and then his um, his son sent me a message and said, hey, Mike, uh, you know, Steve, we, you know, this is from Okinawa because he knew, you know, about all the miracles and stuff. He said, I don't know what to do. And I said, I'll pray. And I, I said, I'll pray about it. And uh, I believe God will show me what to do. And just don't worry. Your dad's going to be OK. Because, you know, 90 years old, haven't moved for three days. I mean, anyone starts thinking, hey, is this, you know, you start thinking it's the end, right? And he's like, OK, you may not come back from this. And I said, I said, this sounds kind of strange, but you got salt and some oil. <laughs> I don't rub it on him. That's all I just rub. And then he said the next day, dad stood up like there's nothing, nothing happened. <laughs> Amen. Just... See, these, these types of miracles, uh, there's biblical precedence too. Like Isaiah had the lump of figs. Isaiah also ran around naked. The Lord told Isaiah, to run, I mean, here you are healing somebody naked i mean you know there's <laughs> biblical precedence for these things like spit and mud i'm gonna do a new thing you know so we've got to follow the holy spirit which is verifiable by the word of god right yeah and that's the thing i tell people like you can't i, I like what you the analogy of the the, ta the the tabernacles you want to build the you want to capture that and i go you know we you can't you just can't and god's made it that way that you can't capture it you have to keep mm -hmm. following it and that, mm -hmm. that again, that that actually sets us free from that old system uh, is to continue to follow him, to continue in what he wants us to do. Uh, how else is the how else is the, the gospel going to go around the world, guys? You know, Amen. you build a tabernacle means everyone's got to come to your place. Think about All it. Right. Think about it. Won't... We build a tablet. We build a temple. Hey, everybody's got to make their way. They got to take their trip out here, you know, to see and experience God. And Jesus said, go. He said, therefore, go. 
Go. You know? Amen. And and that's what it's all about. And that's how the that's how the, the I believe the, the full gospel. I mean, that's a term that people say, well, gospel, etc. But it's a real thing when you look at the full gospel being every part of that person experiencing God, heart, mind, soul, strength, you know, those three things all interact. We see healing, we see deliverance being a part of that. They're all going to be saved, all of it, you know, and that's the process of taking, of heralding the gospel around the world. And I've been convicted that that's how we herald the gospel. We, we, we take the gospel and we herald it by showing these people that you're set free now. That is your salvation. You don't got to wait for it. You don't have to go, okay, well, I'm going to wait till I die to experience God. Like, no, you can experience him right now. That's Amen. the salvation. You know, today's the day of your salvation. That, you know, it's more than just a, a line that we use to, to get people to say a prayer, to get them into a church. You know, this is, guys, it's real and it's real people. Uh, that's what I go back to. I, I do, I remember the names of the homeless people I pray for. The Holy Spirit convicts me of that. Get to know their names because I know their names. Oh, wow. There you go. There's a word. Get to know their names, you know. Uh, Uchiyama-san, Miyamoto-san, all these guys that I know I prayed for. Oh, because I Amen. know their names. We went so we ministering hot here. dogs in the park this last week, and, and uh, some of these homeless people, this is like the fourth time we've seen them. I walked up, man, they had a Bible on the, on the, the uh, table. And there we sat with them for a couple of hours. And now this is the fourth time. I mean, for some of them, and they start just asking questions about Jesus. And one of them says, you know, we met them, we met them and they were, it was freezing. They were charging their phone and they had to charge their phone, you know, and we had a jacket in the car. We gave her the jacket and now she's got a place to live. And she goes, you know what? I seek God every day because when I do that, things are better. And you just, you just love on the people, man. And he changes their lives, dude. He changes their lives. Yeah. Um, we can substitute I wanted to, Holy Spirit. Amen. No substitute. Amen. I wanted to, to ask you, like, uh, first off, for those of you that are just coming in, in the beginning of this broadcast, we talked about what God is doing miracle-wise. God's doing many miracles. That, you can follow Stephen's uh, Facebook videos. People are getting their sight. People are walking. He's minute, the poor have the gospel preached to them. He goes to the homeless, um, and, and it, you know he spends some time loving on them. And then we also talked about um, you can support Steve. He has a blog, Holy Fire Japan. I'm going to put the links. Uh, so if you want to get behind his ministry, what he's doing, um, and what, go ahead. Yeah, well, I just you know as far as yeah getting behind ministry, um, I, I take stuff through paypal uh just for private my you know doing private private ministry stuff and then uh if you want like tax deductible you know go through dcpi you know their credit you know missions organization as well so you have to, you kind of have a choice you know either one's fine with me um but dcpi is dynamic church planting international he actually ch plants churches in japan japan was one percent christian when he started now i hear the numbers are going up to like six percent yeah that's, that's what they say yeah that's awesome. Uh, what are some of the barriers that you you face? Some of the obstacles? I say just the impression that Christianity is not uh, for them, uh, for the Japanese. They have their own culture. They have their own identity. That's a big thing uh, for them um, to, to break free, even if they experience miracles. Uh, it's still a barrier because they're kind of like, how does this work? Um, what does this mean for me? Again, do I have to be, what does becoming a Christian mean? Um, does it mean I can't be Japanese? And so there's a lot of, you know, strong, you know, America is kind of known as a Christian nation, right? I mean, it's kind of, you know, you live in the Bible Belt. I mean, people know about Jesus. They know about God. They know about, they know what they're getting into in a way. But with Japanese, they don't know what they're getting into. They Like Jesus, cross God. They're just like, what is this? And it doesn't mean I can't be Japanese anymore. Or like, wow. Know, wow. Right. You know, I mean, that's, that's a discussion I've had with someone. I, I prayed for this person. They got deliverance, and they're, they're, they're like, I imagine they have the seeds, the big seed in their heart, and they're believing. They haven't been baptized yet. They're like, but what, do I, what am I supposed to do? I have all these obligations to my family. Do I, do I stop doing that? I mean, there's a lot of barriers in that way to the gospel becoming uh, something that Japanese can realize as their identity, uh, and that takes time. Uh, it's still something I'm working through how to explain this in a way that's effective. 
uh, for them. Obviously, the power of God demonstrates. But even as we know in the, in the epistles, Paul demonstrated the spirit and power, but he still had problems with the people, you know, idols and food. And, you know, he's still kind of breaking. He had to break things down. I mean, he had to have a relationship with them. Uh, so in Japan, um, food sacrificed to idols. You know, it's not a big barrier, but it can happen. You know, yeah, I talked about the, the family altars and stuff. Those are getting people to understand, like, do, what, can I do that stuff anymore? Or, um, you know, you don't have altars in your house in America usually, right? So that you do stuff for the family, you know, it sort of revolves around that. So those are barriers. Um, then how do you have that person explain to their family that they love their family, but they can't do that anymore? And so those are barriers that are, are real uh, that we're facing is the identity is the culture uh is pagan and um so christianity seems like a foreign thing even though i'm bringing i'm heralding the gospel with blessings and miracles and healings um but so there's still those layers that we need to go through to get people to understand and really commit their 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 life to jesus like again some people already like that man who burned his family altar like the next day that's awesome that um, is other, awesome that's awesome like yeah all right, just like I don't need that. This guy's he's he paid all this money to this other religion and he's not healed and he's not seeing anything. And he's just he's like, I want the real thing, I love that stuff. But the other people that you know, they experience God, they experience a touch, um, they might have that faith there, but they're just not quite sure how to walk it out yet. Um, there's some the cultural barriers are, are big, um, financial challenges. They're I'll be honest, they're real. Um, I, I don't you know, I don't have a a lot of uh, finances to work with, but God's always providing. Um, so that's that's a, a that's a real challenge for people who are working in Japan, I think, right? Because I mean, it's not a like if you had a thousand dollars, you know, in Japan versus a thousand dollars in let's say Africa somewhere, you know, your money goes a lot further in Africa, right? Let's be honest. That's where a lot of people go. There's a lot of attention, a lot. But the challenge of Japan is that it's expensive to live. Uh, there's a lot of costs financially. Uh, so that's a challenge. It's, to be honest, it's a, it's a challenge to travel. I mean, I, I spent a lot of money on travel. God is providing, and I step out in faith, and he, he just blows me away. He puts money in my wallet and my bank account. All of a sudden, I was like, where did that come from, you know? Uh, so you go, and the Lord provides, but it's a challenge. Like you talk about those are some of the barriers. Um, it's not easy for you to just come out and, and do stuff. There's a lot of costs as far as financially uh, for planting churches. A lot of people talk about this, but that's why I say, hey, let's go. Let's break it down. What does God want us to do? And so those barriers start to go down as we as we we as we uh, pursue God in prayer. You know, then the barriers start to break. But the barriers are real. You know. Uh, I, I, Amen. Like, but you don't wait, dude. That's one thing about you, brother. You don't sit there and wait for the financial. You don't put the 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 financial cart before the spiritual horse. You just go. And I, that's one of the things I've been watching about Steve. He'll just like God told me to go. I'm gonna go. <laughs> you know. And then um, you may sleep in a tube or <laughs> or, or on a floor. Yeah. I yeah. I yeah. It's, like, it's a reality. Jesus said, "Hey, the foxes have you know they're they're." Their holes and the birds have their nests, so the man doesn't know where he's going to lay his head that day. And I was, you know, looks like a little. <laughs> so wait, are you sleeping in a bunny cage? <laughs> go, go. Yeah, that's what it feels like. It's it's thirty bucks a night though, so you can't go wrong. You know, thirty bucks right. a night. And uh, I w was led to go to Tokyo, and uh, I stayed in this little capsule place. And uh, but it's fun to share that because it's it's a reality. It's a reality, guys. Um, you you might be sleeping on the couch. You might be sleeping on the floor. Um, it's not about our comfort. It's about our call. And, but then you get, that's when the, when the Lord comforts it's you. It's not you about our comfort. It's about our call. That's a tweet right there, brother. Tag, tag it. I got to tweet that later. I love the Holy spirit. It just gives those words. Um, but, Amen. It, and you, you, and you, the, the Lord is the God of comfort though. That's why he's, he's comforting, um, you know, Paul and Silas in the prison, right? I mean, in the dungeon, in the dirty, in the dungeon. Dun the Lord is the God of all comfort. You know, he is comforting them. They're, they, they might be in a disgusting, scary, nasty place, but they're just, they're praising God. And uh, so that's, that's what I, I try to share with people that it's guys, hey, you know, a nice building, you know, we talk about church planning, hey, nice building. Uh, hey, I'm not going to say don't go there. No, don't, you know, don't have God provides it. He provides it. Um, but hey, if it's a prison, God may use you in a prison. To start a church you know you got to be willing to follow the holy spirit and that could be a very uncomfortable place but he's the god of comfort 
And um, I find myself the last uh, six, seven months finding myself in a lot of uncomfortable places. I'll be honest, uncomfortable places, smelly places. Um, but wow. I mean, it's the most beautiful. I, I, I had a, I spent some time with some homeless people and I went on the train afterwards and there's a, there's a, a young lady. Um, she, she smelled, she smelled me. I could tell she looked at me and she's like, man, and she stepped over to the side and she kind of walked to kind of put some distance between me and her on the train. Cause I was smelling because I was praying for the homeless. Wow. And I was like, Oh, I was like, I just, you know, you kind of notice, like, why is she moving away? I'm like, oh, I got, I stink. <laughs> Probably that's, you know, it's kind of, and you could just tell, you know, they kind of smell and they kind of, oh, they're kind of, but I was like, wow, wow, you know, that's, that's, you know, Paul would say, you know, that's, I count that as something I'm proud before my Lord is that, Amen. hey, you know, it's that, that we would come away with the fragrance of Christ, you know, living, and then that the, the, the people who are, you know, were death. To the people who are dying and we're life to those who are living i've watched some of your videos where some of the homeless people are getting healed man it's an amazing thing you know a lot mm -hmm. of a lot of the mainstream is just overlooking them but jesus says the poor have the gospel preaching them and you said you know god may have you go to prison in acts chapter 16 you know i love that passage paul uh trying to preach the gospel in asia and the holy spirit says no twice you know don't do that then he's waiting on the Lord, and then there's this man from Macedonia, come preach the gospel to us. Well, Paul, Paul gets all on fire about that, but it turns out he has to go to prison to preach to that Macedonian jailer, right? So God may have you in prison. You know? Yeah, that's, it's a wild story. It's like the, mm -hmm. you know, how many people are signing up? I want to go to jail to do the call of God. You know, go, go get beat. You go through the whole process of going to jail and having all that stuff happen, the drama and everything. But that's exactly what the vision was for, for Paul. And that's amazing to, to, to reflect on that now. And I think that it, Jesus had count the cost. And uh, are we willing to do that? And I, I feel so just like excited to have the chance to go to these people and to, to share. And maybe it's, you know, maybe it's a, it's a prayer. Sometimes it's just me feeding the pigeons with them. I just, one time as one guy, he said, you don't want any prayer. I don't want anything. I'm like, we start feeding the pigeons together and just start talking and just, and then I, I, I left him. I told him what I did. I said, I'm a pastor at, at a church just to kind of give him like a little bit of context of what I do. Not like I'm saying I'm a pastor. I'm proud of it. And, you know, repent to sinner. But I just said, hey, this is what I do. And I just I just want to say, God, God, you know, Jesus loves you. God bless you. Uh, hope to see you again. If you see me, you know, I'm, my name's Steve. You know, we exchange names. And uh, I left him at that. And he just was really blessed, um, you know, at that interaction, you know. And I think that that's what we need to be willing to, to say. That's that's where we can start. And sometimes, there's, again, God leads to other things, you know. Praying for people. I, I remember one guy. Uh, I had this video a while back. Um, in the morning, I was waiting to meet someone for church planning training, and I was just waiting in front of the station. And there's this guy. I just there's no one around. Everyone's going to work. Um, they're passing this guy, and he's sitting there. And I'm like, I can tell he's a homeless guy. You can just tell by the way they're looking. And he's just sitting all by himself. And I'm like, I'm tired. I'm really tired. I had no sleep that night, actually. Uh, I had very little sleep, maybe like three hours sleep. And I'm like, oh, man. So there's a vending machine by him. I walk by the vending machine. And suddenly I'm like, just tugs my heart. I ask him, hey, you want something to drink? And he just looked at me and he's like, what? And I'm like, hey, good morning. You know, you want something to drink? I'll buy you a drink. What do you want to drink? And he gets up and I realize he's paralyzed. Oh, um, man. And I, I didn't even know. I didn't even, And I was like, whoa. He gets up and he starts, you know, kind of limp, you know, limping over to me, dragging one foot. And I was just like, oh, oh. And I said, all right. First of all, I just loved on. I said, hey, which one do you want? I'll, you know, he's like, oh, yeah, thanks. You know, and then I, he got some coffee. I, I got a coffee from the vending machine, iced coffee, whatever. Sit down, start talking. I, oh, I go, can I, can, I, can I sit with you? I ask his permission. And this is how I just learned that. Like, hey, I don't ask your permission. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lift this man up. I'm going to lift him up. I say, is it okay if I sit down and drink with you? And, of course, he's like, oh, yeah, please sit down. And I just start talking, what's your name? And uh, do you live close to here? And you know, just start talking on him, loving on him. And I go, oh, it's a hot one today. And, and this, you know, and I'm just telling him what I'm doing here. I'm here doing some training for people. And, um, and I go, oh, I noticed your, your leg. What happened there? And he's, oh, yeah, I had a stroke, you know, uh, many years back. I had a stroke. And, 
Um, and also his, he, he had another clenched hand as well. Um, and he could only lift his arm, arm like about this high. And I actually have a video with this guy. And um, I just literally put my hand on in his, and the thing, it was so hard to look. I mean, he was homeless and he's got, he had blood all over his legs. Um, his leg was rotten, guys. He'd not been in the hospital. It was just one of the hardest things to look at. Cause I said, I go, well, let me take a look at it. I'm going to pray for it, but let me just take a quick look. And he lifted up his pant leg and there's just, you know, the, the, it was stuck to his leg because of the blood, because of the swelling. Uh, and, you know, I mean, think about it, but he, it's, he said he doesn't feel, I said, touch it, you feel it? He's like, I don't even feel it, but it's just, it's, it's a dead leg. It's a dead leg that he's, he's dragging his leg when he goes anywhere. Um, and he just, he said, and I said, and he's kind of was like, well, well, I'm just waiting kind of to die, you know? Um, and I looked at him and I said, I'm going to pray for you, bro. And I my hand on that, that, that leg that was swollen and blood stained and pus ridden and the Lord just started touching him and he and he just said he started feeling warm and he could start feeling in his leg and then the next thing I know he's 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 walking and I, I thought to pull my phone out I was like I gotta get this on the phone you're walking and he's like he's like he's not I go you're not dragging your leg you're lifting it up do you know that and he's like oh I am because it's like once you start walking you start walking he's not thinking twice he's right, walking this is on back. video <laughs> I've seen it yeah yeah and then I said, hallelujah, praise God, lift your arms up. And he's just start. he's like, oh, I can lift my arms up. I can lift it up. And this is just, I mean, it's so beautiful. And I remember looking at my hands afterwards, and I saw the blood on my hands. I could have just done nothing that morning. I could have just laid down. I could have just said, I'm, I'm, I'm just too tired to talk to people. And I saw the blood on my hands. And the Lord says, Steve, don't be, ever be afraid to get your hands dirty. Mm. And you read about Jesus healing the lepers. He said, I want you to cleanse the lepers. You leprosy, it's swollen, it's bloody, it's nasty. It's, I prayed for a woman with skin disease. Half of her skin came off and of stuck to my hand. And I still declared that she'd be healed in the name of Jesus. And I didn't see any, mm. I didn't see anything break out and all of a sudden all the went away, but I still believe for her healing. But this man, I just, it, the Lord, when I prayed for him and he got healed, and he saw it, he saw it. He, when he started to realize he was healed, and the Lord said, look at your hands. And I just was like, wow. And he's like, Steve, don't ever be afraid to get your hands dirty because Jesus won't. Jesus never does. He just says, I cleanse the leper. I cleanse you. He said, when the leopard man with leprosy came to Jesus, right? He says, I am willing. And he touched him. Amen. And he touched him. There's a lesson to be learned here, brother, because if you never initiated the conversation, this man never would have gotten healed. I mean, Never. that's why we need to overcome our, our pride, our inhibition. We need to actually go love on people or nothing's going to happen. Amen. Do it. Just do it. And uh, mm. it starts with that. It starts with the entering with love. That's a, if anything, there's a less. That's the one thing I kind of teach on. It's like you got to enter in love. And that's just, anyone could do this. Look, this is saying, hey, you want something to drink? <laughs> that's yeah. not a hard thing to do. And that's how I entered the conversation. And the next thing I know, because I know what God's done, he's already showed me these miracles and stuff. I know that God, if it's God, God can do it. If it's God, he'll, he'll, open, he'll open the situation to go that way. And bam, we, and we see it. And uh, you can even witness it. You can even record it now. And it'll encourage thousands of people. I mean, that, that video, gosh, I think it's got 3,000 plays on it, which means for me, that's exciting to go, hey, that, that's, that's encouraging people. That's touching people. I'm not doing it to show off. God's do God's showing off, not me. <laughs> I'm I'm just I'm just Steve. I got an Oceanside baseball t shirt on. I am a guy that went to a high school that, you know, <laughs> I'm just a normal guy. I don't this is I, I live a normal life in the sense of I there's nothing that I've trained to become this super healer guy. I've just learned to trust Jesus and to know and to believe. And Jesus says it's you have to be like a little child to be the greatest in the kingdom. When people would ask, who was, who's going to be greatest, Jesus? Who's going to be the top? And he said, well, he grabbed a little, Jesus grabbed a child right there. And he said, look at this child. You want to be great in this kingdom. You got to act like this child does. Just be sincere. Amen. Be true. Ask people what they need if they want to drink. I'll be their friend. You know, just be simple. Right. Faith works by love. You know, it's not a show. It's actual genuine love. And that's one of the things that, you know, we need to actually love the person and that that's yeah, something that's that i'm learning um i want to ask you what do you think the future of ministry is how 
how are things going to change? Are things going to change? Is God changing now? Yeah, well, I think, well, there's a lot going on. I think, uh, you know, Kevin Riordan, you know, these people that you're seeing. It seems like there is a, a movement of God right now that this wave of God that people are just getting on. And um, right now, I, you know, right now it's it's now and it's now it's get on. It's, it's start riding, riding what God's doing. And uh, he's always been there. I think, you know, one of those things that we're waiting for God, he's like waiting for us. And uh, he's like, I want to show you guys more. Come on, come on, come on, get on, get on your board, start paddling, uh, catch up with me. You know, and once you start going, it won't stop, you know. And I think the future of the ministry is really a kingdom mindset that is really not about uh, one person, one ministry. It's about a kingdom and bringing the kingdom of God uh, wherever you are. And that's what I want to do. I think church planting is a tool for that. I think uh, praying for healing is a tool for that. It's These are all tools. Um, that guys have given us to uh, equipped us with. And uh, I see the future of ministry is just expanding what God's starting uh, in us. And uh, I'm, I, I'm hungry to learn more about how I can bring the kingdom like Jesus brought the kingdom, you know, walk like Jesus, you know, if anything, that's the simple way that they all knew the little John put it, you know, uh, John the revelator, he said, Hey, if anyone wants want to just talk about how to do this Christianity thing, just walk like Jesus, just simply walk. Walk like him. That's Amen. putting it all in a nutshell. You know, um, man, a few words, John the Revelator, as far as when I read his letters, you know, the first John, you know, uh, letter, second, all those letters by John. This, he's very succinct. And I think it's amazing what you can take away from the word is that, hey, we're supposed to just simply walk like Jesus and um, not not try to get too caught up in all the ministry details. Although there's, you know, there's, you know, being administrative and, and organized is, is important. It is. I, I, I do that and I teach on that. But let's not make it too complicated, right? And uh, I think the future, is, the future of ministry is being simple. Um, the, the future of ministry is just following uh, the, the Lord and walking like him. And it's a kingdom, you know, imagine like a kingdom coming. Uh, and people are, you know, what they thought Christianity was is starting to change. Uh, because it's coming in power, and um, we talk. You talk about the sons of God. You know, they 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 are the ones who hear the voice, right? And the sons of Amen. God. And, yeah, and uh, those are, we we manifest the, the the kingdom on the earth. I mean, because we're His children. I mean, really, you start to break down what this all really means. Is not uh, what we would call religion. It's not what we would call, um, you know, even the word ministry kind of gets a little bit. Uh, strange at times because it's like ministry it's like it's more than ministry guys it's a kingdom and th that's what i go back to when i talk about um my my vision for for doing more uh in, in the future is like let's just keep it like a kingdom because that's what jesus said jesus didn't say my ministry he didn't say my he, you know we have the make twice we see church come up in the bible um you know, I don't want to get into a theological debate about that, but, you know, Jesus talked about the word kingdom way more than he, any other word in reference right. to what he was doing. Amen. So, that, you know, you, you, can, you can go back, well, he said the word church when he said to Peter. I'm like, yes, I know, and I teach church planting. I, 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 I'm totally there with you. But let's be, let's be honest. He's like, how many times does he say kingdom? Like all the time. All and the so time. I think that's how we have to like look at, okay, so he's talking about kingdom. I want to think God thoughts. I don't want to take what I've been taught and, and superimpose it and change what Jesus is saying. He says, my kingdom, my kingdom, my kingdom, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. He's continually speaking of it in this way. So I think if we look at it this way, it will change the, the future of what our ministries are going to be because it's all about fitting into the kingdom of God and looking at that way. And I think that's, that's the future of what I see this wave moving to. Um, and I'm excited because then, you know, then you could be, if you're a kingdom, you're just like, you're a person in the kingdom. You're American. Like that's a country, right? So like you're an American and you could, you could be, you could be a baker. You could be a this, you could be that. It doesn't take away from that what you are in the kingdom. You know, you're a citizen. You're, you know, our citizens in heaven. We bring heaven to earth. We're God's ambassadors. I mean, these are, the scripture teaks, talks about this stuff all the time. And uh, so we are heralding the message, you know, uh, proclaim the gospel. It's a kingdom. Yeah, if, you're, it's a if you're an ambassador for the kingdom, you're bringing the culture of the kingdom of heaven to wherever you go. It's like bringing, an, if you're an American and you're going to Zimbabwe, 
you want to bring your coffee, you want to bring your American stuff with you and transform your region. It's kind of the same thing. That's the idea. And one of the things you said, this, this wave of God, God showed me in a dream a long time ago that there's uh, prophets, uh, pastors, apostles, they're, they're like on surfboards, you know, and they're uh, waiting to catch a wave. You got to look on the horizon and when God has this wave come up to you, you just got to get in position. You have to swim into position to catch your wave and then just ride it. And I believe um, in Romans eight fourteen it says, for as many are led by the spirit of God, those are the sons of God. The first, when Jesus came the first time, one of the problems was with the church in the wilderness that, you know, that is rejecting Jesus right now. It's like the Holy spirit. Uh, I believe the Holy spirit is doing stuff right now and we need to truly seek relationship with the spirit of God and follow him, catch the surfboard, you know, get on the surfboard because he's doing stuff right now. Right. And the spirit is, you know, to Jesus and then the father, I mean, it's, it's all connected and, and uh, uh, you can't leave the Holy spirit out. You just, it's so easy for us to kind of do that. Well, I think especially, you know, you look at the tradition, uh, American tradition of the historical, you know, where we see movements of God. It's like the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, hey, the Holy Spirit's the one showing me. And then that's the Father's plan. And, and I'm part of that. And I can't do anything by myself. You know, it's all, you know, it's the, so it's the same thing. We, we have to have the Spirit be leading us or else we kind of get into this stale thing. We're doing what was old instead of what's new and what God is doing. And it becomes about our agenda and preserving it. And, uh, I totally agree with you, man. That's just getting in and getting in positions. The Holy Spirit is, is, is <laughs> he's like, it cannot be contained, guys. It's water. It's wind. You can't contain it. You can't yeah. just try and grab that wind. You know, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Amen. And that's okay. It's okay. You cannot contain him. That's okay. He says, follow me. And <laughs> we got to, we got to do it. And uh, you can be joyful in that. You can be joyful not knowing where you're going to rest your head. You can be joyful um, in this, you know, in this walk of, of walking like Jesus. And I try to explain that to people. It's just joy. I mean, Jesus had great joy. I mean, look at, you know, and to make his joy complete was like that his, uh, his disciples would, would actually, um, you abide in him. You know, he talks about that, that he's, he's come to make their joy complete and that he was filled with joy. Uh, the Lord was filled with joy knowing when he endured the cross, right? This is the joy that he endured the cross. You know, he counted Amen. that. As, the joy set before him. Yeah. He, he knew, he knew that, that, that joy was there and he can, he could, he could go forward in that joy. And um, that's something that I, I try to hold on to when things get a little bit confusing at times. But it's that joy. Okay, we got the joy of God. We have, we can, and that's, again, that's, that's abiding in him. That comes from abiding. That is that joy, you know, that your joy, he told the disciples, your joy is going to be made. I want to make your joy complete. Therefore, that's why you're abiding in me. And then it's going to, the joy is going to flow to you. It's all connected. It's all connected. And uh, we're connecting even, and we're experiencing joy in this conversation because of Amen. God. Amen. I love talking about Jesus, man. Speaking of joy, when Susan and I go out and Joseph just sent me a message, we're probably going to go out here in a, in a little bit uh, to like uh, whatever God has us go. But speaking of joy, I mean, you can watch a football game, you can watch a baseball game, watch American Idol TV or whatever, but you're missing out, brother, because when you go out and you overcome yourself and you talk to somebody and then you pray and then their face lifts up, and go their mouth opens and they say how did you know that or god sent you there's this joy that you're actually being that god's using you that you're taking part of his plan of salvation and that is true joy you know what amen. i mean that is joy amen and that that's it's like a complete joy there's nothing missing there you know, mm -hmm. you could go on a fun ride you know disneyland or whatever and you're like oh that's fun but then there's like a little bit of that it's not full joy, but there it doesn't no, last and it doesn't last that, and it doesn't last. Yeah. You don't sit here. You don't sit here and remember like the two people getting out of the, the, the wheelchairs that you're talking about, or, you know, the, the joy of the person you pray for one person, her vision came back and she went home and then her dad's vision came back. I mean, yeah. this Woo, is stuff, <laughs> this wow. is stuff that you just have joy. It's just like, man, that's awesome. It's just awesome to watch. And it's everlasting joy. When you ride a roller coaster, it's fun right there, and it's fun. It's not joy. It's fun. It's different. Mm. 
Yeah. And it's, there's a difference. And I think that that's when we can learn the difference, then we can move forward and with this like, expectation, like this is the thing I expect people to be healed. I expect it to happen. I expect it to happen because it's just, and I know, and I'm, I'm, I'm already thanking God before I do it. Before I even lay hands, I'm like, I'm glad I got this opportunity. God, I'm so happy. Yay. Amen. And we're going to get healed. And it, I, I use this analogy. It's like, it's like a credit card, you know, guys, Jesus paid for our, our healing and our deliverance. He paid for it. It's already paid for. Like when you scan a card, it's paid for, man. It's, there's money in the account, you know? If, and so we just, when you're buying groceries, you don't go, I, I really hope that this card if it's the will of the credit card company, <laughs> that it will be. You just don't do that, do you? you, you That's awesome. You just scan the card, man. You just go and they get awesome. your stuff. And there you go. Yeah, and if it don't work, there's something wrong. It don't work, then you go. That's the default is no, it doesn't work, right? So that's the way we have to approach healing. Um, that's a little story I use. It's hopefully it's easy to understand, but that's how it is. And then there, there are times you gotta, you ever use your card and you're like, it says, Oh, it won't work. And you talk to the register person, he calls the manager out and like, Oh, there's some, and there's, there's a little bit of, you gotta do that, man. But that's, that's not the norm. That's the, that's the, the rare case. So we have to go with the expectation that when you pray for people, when you go and meet them in that place, like you're going out today, Conrad, that's exciting. Hey, you're going to scan. You're just going to, hey, Jesus paid for your healing. Jesus paid for what, you know, your deliverance. And I'm just going to speak that over you. And that's going to happen. And it's just scan. It's like scanning the card. You know, we got the authority. That's what it's all about is that authority in Jesus that he's given it to us. So when we go out and we share the gospel, he said, that's, this is yours, guys. He, I've given you authority to do these things. Why? Because it gives glory to him and to the you know, Father. He says that. That's what, he said, that's why he's going to give glory to, to the Father in heaven. That's why I'm giving you the card. So that when you do these things, people will give glory to God. And he says, when you have a light, don't put it in the bowl. You know? You go out and you shine it before men that they'll give praise to the Father in heaven. When they see that, when they see the miracles. When they see their family do all these things. And when they get delivered. When they, they, when they get a sense of, of, of new worth in their life because you prayed over them. You know, there's lots of stuff going on. This doesn't always have to be physical healings, but I mean, there's heart healings. There's all sorts of stuff, but Jesus paid for it all. And you just, all you have to do is just scan it like, you're, like that's how it's that simple. If you just think of it that way, it's, it's just saying, all right, in the name of Jesus, he's paid for your, 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 your redemption. You know, he's paid for you to be set free of everything that you, you've ever done. Uh, that's been had a hold on you and that's how you do it. And it's just go from there. That's how you approach this sort of ministry um just like you know it's not easy it's not a hard thing to go to the store and use your credit card to buy groceries or your debit card to buy groceries right anyone can yeah. do it anyone yeah. who believes that they can buy their groceries with a debit card can buy their groceries with a debit card right conrad amen <laughs> anyone well, steve believes? i'm going to ask you we've been talking for a little over an hour i'm going to i'm going to put uh i'm going to put your links wherever you're listening to the show i'm going to upload it to youtube uh, I'm going to put the links for Holy Fire Japan, the links to follow Stephen on Facebook. That's where, where he does a lot of his stuff. But your blog, I mean, I I love to son still go back and look at some of the old blog posts to kind of watch the, the metamorphosis of what you're doing. But you can also see his videos where people are getting healed. A lot of the, and he does some behind the scenes stuff on Facebook, uh, the story. I mean, that's pretty cool to watch, too. So you want to see what he's doing behind the scenes. I'm going to include the link to Voxer because a lot of the stuff that he talks about is on Voxer. Voxer is a walkie-talkie app. You, you can communicate with people all over the world and listen when you want. It's pretty cool. Just check it out. And, um, Stephen, you want to pray us out before we finish? Yeah, up? yeah. I feel like Come I'm on. already praying in my in my heart. And um, such a great conversation, Conrad. I just oh, want more, Lord. We want more. Is there anything else you want to say before we, before we finish? Oh, yeah. Just, well, you know, friend me on – if anyone's watching this – friend me on facebook i'm always shooting stuff up there uh posts thoughts um you know again i do that the story thing on messenger and stuff too and you know people can kind of see you know what my day is like and yeah i just i i encourage you to follow you know just like that's really all you know that's how we all learn is by following people really Amen. and uh you want to learn how what god's doing in my life and just you know feel free to follow me and and he'll and he'll you know i believe god will show you stuff and because he's showing me stuff and it's really exciting. Um, yeah, my blog, I, I don't do that as much as I used to. I probably post about once a month, and it's usually kind of a summary with videos. Again, that's where I can kind of collect a lot of those videos if you want to see some of the miracles I'm talking about. 
and some other ones that are just pretty amazing. I've had a chance to take with my uh, phone, and uh, you'll see the faces light up. It's a, it's awesome to see it when they when they do the face, you know, and they go what? That's in the what I live for. Watch that face change, man. Yeah, That's in the middle of the park at nighttime, man. <laughs> this woman got healed. She starts. She puts her cane away. She's just like, I can't believe it, you know. The stranger comes up her in the dark and says, do you want prayer? <laughs> and she said, and I convinced her to have her pray, you know, that I could pray for her, for her knee. And she got healed. It's awesome. Anyways, let's pray. Thank you, God. Thank you. Let's just give you glory right now for all the things that you've done and you're continuing to do through Conrad, through me, through others, Lord, who are putting you in the center, Lord. You are in the center. And our lives and everything we have is meant for your glory. And, uh, it's an amazing thing. And yet you are so loving. You're so merciful, God, that you just, you just pour your blessings out on us. You, you, you pour yourself into us. That you're the living God and you desire a relationship with us. And you pour yourself into us that we runneth over like a cup that's running over. That you give living water and out of our bellies flow living water. And I just thank you for that living water. I thank you for that. That when we put you in the center, we have access to all the things of heaven, to all the, the, all the glory, all the love, all the joy, all that you are, God. And I just I speak that now to anyone who's listening, that they, want, they would just put you in the center right now and that you would just flood their, their mind and their body and their thoughts with heaven, their bodies with healing. And that they would be completely restored if they're tired, that they would just be set free right now of that tiredness and that they would be filled with the Holy Spirit. You said that if we were to ask, what would we ask for? You know, you know, Lord, all of our needs before we even ask. But you said that we would ask for one thing, and that would be the Holy Spirit. You said how much more when you ask the Father, he'll pour the Holy Spirit on you. So that's what we need today, Lord. That's what we need today. We don't need more money. We don't need more of this and more of that. Lord, you meet us right where we are, but you say, ask for the Holy Spirit and you'll have everything you need. Daily bread, provision, healing, everything. Holy Spirit, come. I just pray that right now. You fill Conrad, no. who, Holy Spirit, and then you fill me, Lord. Even as I go to sleep, that I would be full of you, full of you, that I would dream dreams and that people, who, if they're going to bed right now, wherever they are in the world, they, they would dream of you, God. Dream your dreams. And they would see visions, Lord, that you would show them what they're supposed to do. You would encourage them, Lord, wherever they're at. God, and just more Holy Spirit, just fill and flood people right now that listen, that they would be healed and restored of, of any disease, any, any pain that's in their body right now. Just go right now, like washing out the cup, all the, the, the infirmity, all the, the dirt and the filth that just flood out of there. Because it's being, they're being filled with the Holy Spirit. I just thank you for this, this time and for the, the things that you're doing. And the more, the more is what we desire. We want more of your kingdom to, to expand and to grow wherever we go. We want you to go with us. That your kingdom, that your, that your fame, would, your, that your name would be honored throughout the earth, as it says in the Psalms. That be still and know that I'm God. That I, the Lord, am God and I will be honored throughout the earth amen 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 as you were praying for the holy spirit there um there's that that cup in psalm 23 my cup runs over and i, I saw this that there are people with cups and it, it it's dark in the cup right now and there's little chambers and god is wanting us to just give those chambers to him so he can and, and then he also wants us to expand our our cup so we can receive more. I don't know what that means, but I'm just like, let's expand ourselves to make more room for God in our lives. And in, in one of the things about that cup, you know, fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord. One of those things about that cup is it overflows to those around us, man. You know, when, it, when our cup runneth over, it's just, it's an amazing. And through social media, I mean, you prayed from Japan to hear, I felt the presence of God. You pray for people on Voxer, they get healed. I mean, the presence of God is spilling through social media. You know, I think of when it says, let the let let them know the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Well, guess what? Social media is like the waters covering the sea. It's like it covers the earth. Amen. And talking about, we're talking about Jesus right now. All mm. pe there are people all over the world. Nick Sears in, in 
in uh, Canada, uh, some people in Land Passes, Texas, some people in Australia, some people in Japan. They're all over the world. And it's like right now the knowledge of the Lord is is covering the earth right now in real time. Amen. Amazing. Yeah, it's flood, flooding the earth. It's the word is coming to, to pass. It's an amazing time to be alive. Amen. And, you know, you guys, I, I know that I, I brag on Stephen a lot, but he has he said some prophetic stuff to me. Then I'm just like going, dude, it's just like happening. It's not, it doesn't take like a month or a year. It's like, I'm listening on a Voxer and it's happening right now. I'm like going, wow, he doesn't know I'm driving. I mean, he's, dude, I, I'm just like blown yeah. away by what God is doing. It's amazing. It's amazing. You get filled with the Holy Spirit. You don't know what you're saying, but it like, you're like, what? You're just, you're saying what I'm seeing. And I'm like, I am. Right now I'm looking at what you're saying. I'm like going, dude, my eyes were on that thing. I just, this happens a lot. And you and I will, will the, the Lord will give us the same thing the same day. It's yep. amazing. Yeah. That's the spirit of God, brother. Amen. Let's keep going. Amen. God bless you. Hey, everybody, remember to share this with your friends and family. Be able to uh, share this on social media, wherever you're listening to this podcast or watching the video. And I'm going to have the links to everything. So be sure and check the links. I'm going to have Holy Fire Japan, where you can follow Steve on Facebook, probably even Twitter, and uh, DCPI, and how you can support Steve. God okay, bless you, brother. You guys. God bless you. Till we meet again, dig deeper and go higher. Higher.